Hi everybody! Um, this is actually only a couple of days before school starts and I'm still hanging in there so um, <laughs> I thought maybe I'd actually be making this video for you and I would like get to show you the baby but he's not here yet so um, you get me around still in order to do this one. This video will be for middle school band fundamentals and what I will do first and eighth grade needs to do this also is take you through each one of the fundamentals um, and kind of for seventh grade, you'll be learning it for the first time, but for eighth grade, you'll be um, you'll be reviewing it, and I will do some of them really slowly, so you can play really slowly along with them, and then I'll actually play all the way through it. And so you'll use different parts of this video for whatever stage you're at for learning fundamentals. But the goal is by the time I see you, um, when I'm like back for real, I'll see you all before then. But when I'm back for full time that we're able to play all the way through fundamentals and that um, we can use this as the basis for how we sound as a band because it's really important to have all of these parts of middle school band fundamentals. And I always like, actually came from Grace McCorkle who's now in high school, but she always said that we put the fun in mental. And so I always think of that when we play this one because we do put the fun in mental. So on A, this one you might look at and you are like, oh, it's just whole notes, okay? And it's like the first five notes of the B flat major scale, starting on note five and then going four, three, two, one. I don't have to think about this. Wrong. Every time you play A, you can make something better, including me. Like I will not play A perfectly when I do that with you right now. When you're playing A, it's at a nice full volume seven mezzo forte with the absolute best sound that you have. And long tones exist because your fingers don't have to do very much. So when you play A, your fingers aren't moving fast so you can focus on making the absolute best sound you can. So things to think about when you're making a really good sound. Set your face. Make sure that once you have a good embouchure and you know what that looks and sounds like on your instrument, that once you have a good sound, that you have a quiet, still face with a big space in your back teeth because your instrument isn't the only thing that resonates and makes sound. Your body also helps your instrument to sound really good. Second thing that you'll think about is balancing the pyramid. So remember that basses will have the biggest, fullest sound, then the tenor voices will fit their sound inside the bass sound. Altos fit your sound into tenor sound. Sopranos, you'll fit your sound into, um, into the alto sound. So that'll balance us as an entire group. You should never be playing louder than the people on either side of you, including front and back to you. So listening to the type of sound that you're making. You're also thinking about playing an exact whole note and in your brain, you should be counting, I'm gonna do it with the metronome. One and two and three and four and off. One and two and three and four and off. One and two and three and four and off. So your brain can do that because your fingers aren't doing very much. So there's so much to think about. Breathing on beat four. This is A of fundamentals playing along with me. One, three, one, Two, three. That's A. So learn that one and go back to the beginning of the part about A as many times as you need to until that is really well done. B is a little bit more challenging. On B, if you would like to use your fingering chart that is at the front or the back if you're in eighth grade of your books, then use those because this B exercise is um, the Remington exercise that goes down by half steps. And so you'll find your first note and your first two measures 
goes back one box in your fingering chart. Then the next one goes back two boxes. The next one goes back three boxes, four boxes, five boxes, six boxes, seven boxes. And that's how that um, Remington exercise works. So don't be afraid to use your book when you're learning this because it's very important that you play the correct notes when you're playing this one. Things you're thinking about on this one, all of your notes are slurred for each Remington exercise. They're not tongued. That's especially important for brass players that you're using the position of your tongue to change the note and not re-tonguing and saying ta in order to make that new note. So you'll say ta and you'll lower your tongue so that you can get lower on each one of these notes for the brass players. So for B, I'm gonna play it with the metronome a little bit slower all the way through thinking about playing exact half notes and exact whole notes and also exactly the correct pitches. And then when I come back and I spend time with you, I will help you tune some of these notes because some of these notes are pretty challenging to play, especially in the brass players who are using third valves or seventh positions way at the end of their instrument. So here's B. <coughs> playing along with me. One, three, one, two, three. should have noticed that the very last Remington exercise was the same fingering or the same slide position between those two notes that are right there. C, articulations. On this one, you'll only have one note on the first thing or on the whole exercise, but um, what you're doing with your airstream will stay the same. It's what your tongue is doing that will change on each one of those. So the first one is just regular articulation, T, ta, or da. The next one with the accents, it's kind of like a baby crescendo day crescendo. It'll be a little bit louder at the beginning and a little quieter at the front, but the way that you do that is putting a hard attack on the duh or the t part of your articulation. So instead of saying ta, I say ta, 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 ta. And it's a really strong front uh, part of that, uh, of that articulation. So accents are the ones like this. The dot, the little dot is a staccato. That means separation. So your articulation will be dit, 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 so that there's lots of space in between each of those notes, but they don't slow down. That doesn't mean any slower or any faster. The last articulation, this one, is called marcato. And marcato is often used for emphasis and a really strong emotional, like, punching kind of a power and it's also often used in marches so a marcato is a dot 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 and it's a nice strong articulation so lots of air through all of these and it's okay if all of these are at a forte level because first we need to use fast air and learn how to use our tongue correctly on these articulations and then we can back the dynamic level up off up off after that wow that was really hard for me to say C, playing along with me. I'll do it with the metronome again. C. One, three, one, two, three. Marcato will be pretty similar. It's just the difference in your mind and in your face and in your intention. The difference between dit and lots of space and dot with 
power and force on that one. D is our um, five note scales of four different scales. Hold on a second, sorry. <coughs> so the first one should be really pretty straightforward and easy for you. It's our B flat major scale. The second one is our E flat major scale. Then we'll move to A flat major in the third line and F major in the last line. <coughs> so remember with scales, none of them are harder or easier than any of the other ones. It's just a different set of patterns that begins on a different note. Well, the pattern is the same. It's still do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re. It's still that same pattern. It just starts on a different note. And the pattern changes at the end of every line. So at the end of each of your lines, you'll see two skinny bars and then a new key signature. So they'll either show you natural symbols, flat symbols, or sharp symbols, and they're telling you what you need to be thinking about for the next line for which notes are sharp or flat or not sharp or flat. So looking at those key signatures is extremely important because that will tell you what notes need to be changed a little bit to keep the pattern the same, even though you're starting on a different note, if that makes sense. So the pattern will be the same every time. Do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do is the pattern every time. It just starts on a different note. So if it sounds different to your ear, you're playing a note incorrectly. And make sure that you're never playing a note incorrectly and just staying there and keeping it wrong. Ask around, email me, um, look it up in your book. See if you can figure out how to make that pattern sound different by playing a different note. Don't ever just keep playing it wrong to keep it playing it wrong. So this is D. This will take us um, some time to learn, especially in seventh grade, and you'll have to go line by line to learn this. So the first way that I am going to play this is line by line at a slow tempo, and then I'll play the whole thing at a slow tempo um, for the learning portion of this particular video. So I'm gonna bump the tempo way down. Let's see at 90. <coughs> We're gonna bump it down a little bit more actually. So here's your tempo one and two and three and four and. If you need to split off into individual groups or as individuals even to work on D, that's definitely a good way to work on this one. Otherwise, we're going to do it line by line with this video. So stop and repeat it anytime you need to redo one of these lines. This will probably be our easiest one. Line one, this is from where it says D to the end of this line. It's concert B flat major. One and two and three and four. One, two, three. practice on your own for a couple of minutes and then come back and do that part again with me. This is from measure 44 to the end of the second line. This one is E flat major. So your key signature has changed. You've either lost some sharps and flats or you've added some sharps and flats. Number 44, second line of D. One and two and three and four and one, two, three. Repeat that one until you've got that one. D might take several days. Here's line three, measure 48. You've added, lost, or gained sharps or flats. Number 48, this is A flat major. Check note number four, that's the most important one. Measure 48, one and two and three and four and one, two, three. A 
range on this one. It's either a little bit lower than you're used to or a little bit higher. Check your key signature. Last line, F major. One and two and three and four. One, two, three. and for Mrs. Maddox too, it may take a week or more of warming up on D to get that one learned. And there's lots of ways that you can do it, split into smaller groups. You can repeat the same section of the video and do the third row and then the second row and then the first row and have them each practice each of those until we have that really solid on each line of those. Then in my second video, when um, you go to play all the way through, I'll stop this video and make a second one of all of fundamentals all the way through so you can isolate just that section of it. E is the chromatic scale. Use your fingering chart if you need to. Totally fair game for this one. Also watch the last note. It's only a quarter note. This starts pretty low on your instrument. Low G for the trumpets, which is always fun. This is E, the chromatic scale, slowly. You're just going up box by box, and then you'll go down box by box, starting on concert F. One, three, one, two, three. It's less about reading each of those notes because you might see some of these X's and sharps and flats and blah, 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 and you'd be like, I can't do this. This makes my brain hurt too bad. You're memorizing the pattern of note by note up and down by half steps less than you're trying to read the notes that are actually on their page. So use your fingering chart and then move away from it and see if you can get that pattern learned. Let me know if you have any questions. Happy putting the fun in mental because that's how we roll. Once you're ready and you have all these parts learned, you use my next video to actually play all the way through it from top to bottom, which eighth grade might be ready for that faster. See you later.